All right. So I'm addressing something uh, from a comment on one of my right to travel videos. I don't know why people are going so hard on that video, but it's pretty funny to me. Uh, and this is why um, I talk about not arguing case law. Um, in my opinion, if you argue case law, you could find tons of cases to do the, you know, to say one thing, and you could find tons of cases to say something different. And this is why I don't argue case law. Um, there's a lot of people on the internet, they post case law left and right, they live and die by case law. And in my opinion, it's a waste of time, especially when I could be in the wrong court, I could be arguing the wrong things. And what I'm supposed to be arguing is basically uh, in regards to court procedure, I'm not supposed to argue the traffic stop. Now, for people who don't understand that a traffic stop and a court appearance are two different events, um, I don't know what to tell you <laughs> because it should be very simple to understand these two things. These are two separate elements. Okay, without one, the other does not work. This is why I try to tell you guys, most of you go into court, you use case law, and it's not even needed. Okay, so for this person who made a comment on my video, I want to thank you for doing that. Um, and it seems like either, I don't know if these are lawyers or police, they're trying to act as if, you know, like, oh, you know, the Supreme Court has the Supreme, no, the Supreme Court does not rule me. Okay. The Supreme Court does not rule its citizens. Okay. You have to understand that. So we're, we're talking in regards to one of my videos, which is the uh, right to travel is a wasted argument video. Now, I don't know why these people are trying to prove to me that you have to have a driver's license when you really don't have to have a driver's license. That doesn't mean that the police officer can't give you a fine for not having a driver's license. It doesn't mean that they can't try to get the case in a court, okay? I already explained this, okay? You have to uh, understand the difference between a um, capacity to sue, okay? So the capacity to sue is very simple to understand, okay? The definition, Capacity to sue refers to the legal ability of a person or entity to bring a lawsuit or be sued in the court of law. It is the power to create or enter into a legal relationship under the same circumstance in which a normal person would have the power to create or enter into such a relation. Okay? This includes satisfying legal qualifications such as legal age or soundness of mind, right? So capacity to sue is important because it ensures that only those who are legally qualified to bring a lawsuit or be sued are allowed to do so. This helps to maintain the integrity of the legal system and ensures that justice is served fairly. Okay, let's go back to this person's video. I mean, this person's comment on my video. Okay, whenever the state sues you for a traffic ticket, they have the capacity to sue you. This is why I don't bring up case law, because if you're arguing case law, you're arguing about the state having the capacity to sue you in a function that they license and sanction. Of course they do. <laughs> that doesn't make what they're doing legal. Oh, my goodness. Some people just like common sense. Um, just, just. This is why I tell you to not go into court arguing all these crazy arguments about you have the right to do this, I have the right to do that, I have a right to do this. This is why most people tell you to avoid court because if you can't see court like I'm teaching it to you, you're go you're not going to understand court in in any capacity. Okay, now we can go from capacity to standing to sue. Okay. And I'm kind of messing up one of my videos that I have coming up by doing this. So you have to understand capacity versus standing to sue. So I hope this person actually watches this video because they'll actually learn about law instead of uh, uh, <laughs> instead of just regurgitating stuff. Okay. Here, standing or locus standi is the capacity of the party to bring a suit in court, okay? 
All right, a state statute will determine what constitutes a standing in the particular state courts. These typically will revolve around the requirement that the plaintiffs have sustained or will sustain direct injury or harm and that it is harm redressable, okay? This is state court. So if a person is saying you were speeding, what is the harm to the state in me, spe in me speeding? What is the harm to the, to the state in me not having a driver's license? What is the harm to the state in me not having proof of insurance? There is none, okay? So now you have to understand, so the state doesn't lack the capacity to sue. That means they can sue you for not having a driver's license, but they lack standing to prove how the fact that you didn't have a driver's license impacted them. Now does it make sense to you? This is why I don't go over tons of case law. There's tons of case law saying, oh, you got to have a driver's license. You got to have a driver's license. The court does not have the authority to enforce the driver's license because the state does not have the legal ability to form an injury out of it. That's all I was trying to tell you in that video. <laughs> That's all I was trying to tell you. I was just talking about procedural due process and substantial due process. Nothing, nothing crazy. But let's go to what this person says, because he's bringing out all this case law or she, whoever. He's, so, this, I can tell this is probably a lawyer or a police officer because they like arguing about nothing. So every state has a law requiring you to possess a driver's license when behind the wheel of an automobile. OK, this is not a law. This is a, a suggestion. OK, the state can't form you. You don't need a driver's license to start your car. This is not a, a law. It's a suggestion, just like a speed limit is a suggestion. Driving sober is a suggestion. <laughs> so it's not a law. It's not mandatory, meaning they can't sit there and say, well, we were injured because you didn't have a driver's license. OK, how do you prove that injury? The motor vehicle on the public roads of the state, examples of uh, cal uh, including California Vehicle Code uh, 12500, Revised Code of Washington 46.20.001, uh, Arizona Revised Statute 28-3151. Uh, okay, so if we go over these codes, right? You have to understand these codes are used under the executive branch. So the executive branch has the ability to enforce these codes. I never, I'm never saying that they don't. So look, so look, when you read this statute, it'll go in and you go into defining uh, this chapter, it says a person, which is vague, and this person tried to tell me a person is not vague. In a statute, they have to tell, show you what, what, who it applies to, okay? A person, I'm sorry, a person may not drive a motor vehicle upon a highway unless that person holds a valid driver's license issued under this code, okay? Oops, sorry. I hate when this happens because I get lost. All right, uh, license under this code, except those persons who are expressly exempt under the code. So now, where where's the exemptions? Where's the exemptions? Who who's exempt? Who's not exempt? A person may not drive a motor vehicle upon any uh, off off street parking facility unless the person has holds a valid driver's license of the appropriate class or certification to operate the vehicle, as used in the subdivision off street parking facility means any off street parking. This is still not telling you who this applies to. Okay, this is the stuff that I'm telling you, which falls under the vagueness doctrine. So you have to understand what vagueness is. Which is this is also a due process violation. Somebody using a statute to to 
uh, a sweepingly uh, as a sweeping gesture, but it's not applying who it really applies to. So look, vagueness doctrine, a constitutional rule that requires criminal laws uh, to state explicitly and definitely what conduct is punishable. Okay, the the criminal laws that violate this requirement are said to be void for vagueness. Vagueness doctrine rests on the uh, due process clause of the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendments. Okay, so that means it's for civil and it's for criminal of the United States Constitution by requiring fair notice of what's punishable and what is not. Vagueness doctrine also helps pre prevent arbitrary enforcement of the laws. OK, now, didn't it just show you on this citation? See, I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, all man, some of these people, man, they they are hilarious, dude. Didn't it just say a person may not drive? Who's the person? Who is the person? Now, I'm not trying to use these so-called sovereign citizen arguments or whatever. OK, this has to show who it applies to. OK, where is the definition? Where is the definitions? OK, I might be able to find the definition. So if I find it, I'll, re I'll revitalize this video and put it in here. OK, we're going to go into the next statute. I'm going to do it real quick. Not too long. Let's go into Arizona. All right, I'm just going to try that one. I've already read these statutes, but why not do it again? So that's why you hear people say stuff like, oh, where's the injured party? Where's the corpus delecta? See, they never told you what that meant. You see what I'm saying? Not unless you're here. See, they talk about unless exempt. Okay? Who is exempt? So the statute should tell you what? Who is exempt? Who does it apply to? Okay? <sighs> a person should not drive a motor vehicle on this uh, vehicle. Uh, I'm sorry, motor vehicle or vehicle combination on the highway without a valid driver's license and proper endorsement as prescribed in this chapter. So how does somebody know that their 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 driver's license has a proper endorsement? You wouldn't know that by this statute because it doesn't tell you what a proper endorsement is. A person who is licensed under this chapter is entitled to exercise the privilege granted by this chapter on the highway and is not required to obtain other license to exercise the privilege by a county, municipal, or local board or body with the authority to adopt police, local police regulations. So let's see. Oh, man. I think the person is not... Okay, I'm gonna see if I can find something on this statute. I don't like the way they do their statutes because then I can't find it. Oh, there we go. Title 28. There we go. So let's go under. And it still doesn't give me. Yeah, I hate when they do this when you can't actually see what the definition is because a statute or a, a, some codes should actually have the definition of what they're talking about. So then it makes it easier for people to follow along. We see California a little bit vague there. Um, and now we're going to go into uh, Nevada. It's probably still going to be vague. I, I, I don't expect anything different because most of these uh, statutes and cases and et cetera, most of these are, are just, it's just what it is, is it's double speak. Like when somebody says something, but they don't really say something. <laughs> oh, no. Let's get here. So we'll go. There we go. So I'll make that try to make it quick for you. So look, Title 43, public safety vehicles, watercraft, driver's license, driving schools, driving instructions, licensed drivers required vehicles being told possession of okay licensed drivers vehicles being told possession of more than one license prohibited except is expressly exempted so now i'm going to see where they exempted so let's see this is how you search 
So I, you know, I'm thankful for people for providing some of this content because you can basically just see, look, driver's license, driving. I'm gonna show you in a second once I get there. Oops, come on now. So this is Nevada. Where's the exemptions? Exemptions from licensing. Exemptions from license. The following persons are exempt from licensing under the provision of NRS uh, 883.10 to 83.60 inclusive. Any person driving, uh, any person while driving a motor vehicle in the arm in the service of the armed forces. Any person while driving a road machine. What is a road machine? Farm tractor. Uh, implement of husbandry. Oh, okay. That's probably something like Amish. Temporarily operated or or moved on a highway. Okay, a non-resident who is at least sixteen eight is sixteen years of age, and who has him in his or immediate possession a valid uh, license issue. Okay, so they're talking about that. Any non-resident who is eighteen years, whose home state or country does not require licensing of drivers may, well, that's pretty much every state, <laughs> may drive a motor vehicle for a period not more than 90 days in the calendar year if the motor vehicle is driven, is duly registered in the uh, in the home state or country of the non-resident. So that's just saying who's exempt from licensing. So what people have to understand is the legislature can make any policy any policy, any rule, any rule that they want to. So me and this person is not, we're not disagreeing with each other. We're actually agreeing with each other, but he can't understand because he doesn't understand law. So we're not arguing. I'm saying the state, they can make it. That doesn't mean it's a, a legal enforceable law. So the legislature can make up any dumb law that they want to. That doesn't mean that the court can enforce it because if the person knows what they're talking about, it's very hard for a court to get over on that person. But a person who's reading all kind of case law and stuff, yeah, you're going to sit there and believe, yeah, of course I can't drive without a driver's license like an idiot. All right. We're not going to go into the citation because it's going to be the same shit. It's just going to be double talk and misspeak and all this other stuff. So, look, yes, your audible bill is a motor vehicle and you are a person. Uh, No, no, I am not. Not unless I subscribe to that. So if we understand what the legal definition of a person is, all right. So the context that they're speaking of a person is a legal person, is a human or non-human entity, legal entity that is treated as a person for legal purposes. A legal person is capable of engaging in a usual legal business that a real person can participate in, such as suing, being sued, owning property, and entering into contracts. The concept of legal personhood is especially popular in business law, where Business organizations like corporations, partnerships, and legal, limited liability companies possess legal personhood. As a result, these statutorily created entities are able to be treated as legally distinct from their shareholders and officers. The, pers the legal personhood of legal entities is also understood to afford some constitutional rights, that's where you get the 14th Amendment, rights to these entities, including the due process and equal protection. So you hear people say, oh, don't be a United States citizen. You still have due process rights as a United States citizen. Aspects of the 14th Amendment. This aspect of legal personhood is featured prominently in the Citizens versus Federal Election Commission in 2010 decision upholding the political campaign contribution as an excise of a corporation's free, uh, free speech rights. A legal person may also be referred to a fictitious person or artificial person. So do you get clarity of that in that statute? No, you do not. 
That's what I'm trying to say. If you understand, if you want to play this semantical game and you want to argue and, and play these semantical games and talk about, oh, this case law says and this case law says that. So look, no, nothing in the United States uh, Constitution prohibits the state from enacting a driver's license uh, law applicable to behind the wheel of an automobile on public roads. I never said it didn't. If you watch the video, I never said it. I actually said they can. <laughs> the, the state, this is what people don't get. And I hate when people try to use these case laws in, to, to corrupt common sense. Okay. The state can pass almost any laws, but the court can choose to reject those laws if they don't conform with the Constitution. So the cases he's going to present to me were people who went into the court and made driver's license arguments, which they should have never done. That's why I made the video to tell you to not go into court arguing that you have a right to travel, because that is not the purpose of you being in court. The purpose of you being in court is there are allegations against you and you need to deal with those allegations. That's the point of you being in court. That there's no need for 15 miles of case law. What am I doing here? Okay, somebody said I was speeding. Okay, that's fine. Where's the sworn complaint that shows that I was speeding? Oh, you don't need no sworn complaint. In a civil case, you don't need a sworn complaint? It's just, I beg to differ. Yes, your audible bills. Are, okay, so, okay, states are not limited to only regulating. I never said that. There's nothing in the video that says that. There's no Supreme Court decisions that have held the state can accept. I never said that there was. Every state has a required possession of license, regardless of whether or not you're engaged. I've never said anything about commerce. So I could tell that this person never watched the video. So what they did is they they found the found the title where it says uh, uh, no law requires you to have a, a driver's license. They found that and then they just jumped on that. <laughs> They're missing the whole point of the video. But, you know, some people don't care. They just want to come to your video to argue. OK, please look up the definition of motor vehicle in California and see what applies. It does not. It's very vague. OK. Also, I never said a state cannot require it. But is it enforceable is the point. So he's going to give me a bunch of appellate cases where people argued about a driver's license. Yes, they're wrong. It, the Court of Appeals is right because you're not supposed to argue if you have a driver's license or not. That is an evidentiary argument. That has absolutely nothing to do with your so-called right to travel, and it has nothing to do with the state having the capacity or the 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 uh, standing to enforce said law. That's why I don't I don't argue that. Okay, so look. <laughs> also, I never said a state cannot require it, but is it enforceable? Is the point? WPIC nine uh, ninety eight point oh two. Traffic cases, motor vehicle definition. A motor vehicle is any vehicle that is self-propelled. Vague. Vague. What, is, what do you mean self-propelled? See, if you're stating what a vehicle has to be, you have to break down the, uh, the definition of what a self-propelled vehicle is. You can't just be like, oh, self-propelled. <laughs> That's what people don't understand, the vagueness doctrine. That's why you don't understand. You have to break this down. That's why they can't enforce none of this stuff or any vehicle that is propelled by electric power obtained from overhead trolley wires, but not operated on rails. Motor vehicles include a neighborhood electric, electric vehicle. And well, you, you guys can understand why people are going electric. It seems like if I could take a vehicle and put it under this code, I can enforce these laws. So doesn't that make sense why the executive branch is forcing you to go electric? <laughs> oh, you Tesla drivers. <laughs> A motor vehicle includes a medium speed electric vehicle. This statute fails to define an automobile. Of course they're gonna do that. Of course they're gonna do this. Because it makes more sense to, to, to force people into electric because now all the laws apply to them. That didn't apply to you before. Please see vagueness doctrine to assist you uh, to uh, to assist you also. The statute don't clarify, don't clearly define a motor vehicle as an automobile. The vague, they, I meant to say they vaguely refer to a self-propelled, which isn't clearly defined also. I'm not asking for your conclusion 
I'm asking from the definition from the legislator, which where they have to give you the definition. I understand. I, I mean, I need you to understand. Legislator can pass any statute they want, but enforcement is another thing. Of course, nothing in the Constitution pro prohibits the state from passing laws, a driver's license, uh, passing uh, laws, a driver's license, a state can pass. I don't know why I put this word in just like this. I'm probably doing too many things at once. A state can pass any law at once. That doesn't mean it applies to me or anyone. So what the state does is they make these vague claims then they use these statutes to enforce it on unknowing people. And then when a person comes into court and they say, your honor, I wasn't speeding or your honor, blah, 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 blah. Got you. Now I got you engaged in a controversy. So that's, that's up to the prosecutor, not the legislator. Let me go back because this is big. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Of course, the constitution in the I'm sorry, of course, nothing in the Constitution prohibits the state from passing laws. A driver's license, a state can pass any law it wants. That doesn't mean it applies to anyone. That's up to the prosecutor, not the legislator, if someone is charged. Now, if you understand what I said to you, that's a lot of information. Now, I gave these softball cases in here. Uh, and basically, this is just a softball case. I didn't even, I don't, I don't argue case law. I don't want to go back and forth with somebody in regards to arguments. Okay, so I use Murdoch versus Penn, which is not a good case, obviously. Shuttlesworth versus Birmingham, which is not a good case also. Um, but I'm not arguing that the state can't enforce their statutes. That's not an argument. They can. But the issue the legal issue is do they have standing and capacity to do it? And the answer is no, they don't. The state can almost pass any law it wants, nor does the U.S. I'm just responding to his question. So if it seems redundant, that's why. Nor does the U.S. Constitution prohibit them from doing so. But it does. There is an issue where they can't enforce colorable laws. And these are colorable laws. Okay. But if a person doesn't bring up that argument, then the, the court's not, they don't give a damn about it. They don't care because it's not, it's not their issue. Yeah, they don't want to step on the, if you actually get into a real court, they're not going to step on the law, the, um, the executive branch. Okay. Now, can they enforce it is the key. And the answer is, and, and I'm a, and I've, man, I wrote this whole horribly, is no in most cases. Just the enforcement or the attempt to, of, in, of the enforcement can make an officer waive their immunity due to the warrantless stop, which is colorable in nature, because it is. It's a colorable stop. So look, you're confusing the traffic stop from the court process, as many do. That's their Achilles heel. See, people don't understand when you get into a traffic stop, the traffic stop is separate from the court process. So the state has the right to issue tickets. Just like anybody has the right to send you a bill in the mail, okay? Anybody can send you a bill in the mail. You don't even have to have an account with them. They can send you a bill in the mail. That's the same process with a traffic ticket. So the state can the state can send a new a traffic ticket to you. The cop can issue a traffic ticket to you. But now, now we got to get into that courtroom. And can you get that traffic ticket in the evidence? If it's me across from you, you will never get that in the evidence. Those statutes are not mandatory. Remember, statutes are not mandatory. Sorry, I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In law or binding on the court to enforce them, which is correct. Now, if you prove they are, that's all I want to see. I'll, that's all I want to see. I want to see that he can prove that statutes, I don't care about the driver's license part, prove to me that statutes are binding on the court to enforce, and they're not, because the court is acting as what? <laughs> so you have the legislative branch, right? And then you have the courts, which is the executive branch, if they're operating under traffic court. They're operating as the executive branch, not the judicial branch, the executive branch. Why? Because they have to give you access to a judicial branch, and they can't do that if the, if, if the lower court is actually following the rules. They can't do it. Never, not in a million years. 
Okay, there's nothing more, oops, there's nothing more vague about the definition of a motor vehicle. Okay, yes it is. <laughs> Look, he's one of those people that think that a person applies to everybody. It does and it doesn't. Okay, not unless the statute spe specifically states it, it doesn't. There's no vague, uh, there's nothing vague about the definition of motor vehicle uh, in California Vehicle Code or any other state's motor vehicle. Of course it is. Is your automobile, automobile a device uh, uh, by which any person or property may be propelled? Maybe, maybe not. Moved or drawn upon a highway and moved exclusively by home, human power. See, he didn't even know he's, he's not talking about a car. I don't, I don't have a human power car. What are you talking about? Or used exclusively upon stationary rails track? It most certainly is such a device. No, it is not. What are you talking? When is an automobile uh, used on rails and tracks? Yes, yeah, a train. <laughs> when, who drives a car on rails and tracks? That's people are slow, man. Look, is your automobile self-propelled and not classified as self-propelled wheelchair, uh, motorized tricycle, or motorized quadricycle? Dude, you're just talking about what you think they're talking about. So look, therefore, your automobile is, so he's going over Murdoch versus Pennsylvania. I really didn't care about Murdoch versus Pennsylvania. I was just a softball. So look, was a ruling on a municipal ordinance uh, that other peddlers of books and literature and, yeah, to obtain a business license prior to going door to door is contrary to the First Amendment of freedom, religion, or press, and freedom of express. The ruling does not, I didn't say it has to express driver's license. I don't care about the driver's license. L look, there is no law. He's going to go through rulings. These rulings do not prove that the state has law. It just has, it has, it just proves that the people who are in the court cases do not understand law. That's all it proves. It doesn't prove anything. So look, so until you find a, a Supreme Court case that has ruled, you have, the Supreme Court doesn't grant me rights. <laughs> what are you talking about? The Supreme Court does not grant rights. That's, that's what, what are you talking about? <laughs> this, this, this is how you know how people are communists. You see what I'm saying? They think that the government is supposed to grant, the government don't grant you rights. It's your job to enforce your rights. So until you can actually find a Supreme Court decision that has ruled that has ruled you may have you might have the right to drive. What you mean you uh, you have the right to drive? I don't need the Supreme Court to tell me that. Uh, roads free uh, from uh, from laws such as California Vehicle Code. Who who the who the hell does he think the Supreme Court is? The Supreme Court don't, they don't tell you law. They don't make laws for you. Oh, my God, man. Some people are slow. Okay, yeah, this is a Shuttlesworth versus Birmingham, which is another one where I didn't really care about it. I just put that out there. That's You, you always hear those regurgitated ones. So I just put it out there to see what he said. This has absolutely nothing to do with drop licenses. And the quotation you attributed to this case doesn't appear anywhere in the ruling. You would know this if you actually read the decision. Actually, I didn't read the decision. I didn't care. <laughs> so sometimes I get into arguments. I just got off a two hour, uh, almost an hour and a half consultation. I didn't have time for this. But uh, in, in this instance, the U.S. Supreme Court was ruling on appeal of uh, by Reverend Shuttlesworth on a conviction of aiding and abetting. Okay. Okay. Anywho, for example, the plan is right. So he's going to use Shapiro versus Thompson, which really doesn't doesn't prove anything. If he, if he read his actual cases, right, he his cases would agree with what I'm saying. OK, like I like when people they, they use case law. I didn't read none of those cases. I, I probably read them like years ago, but I haven't read none of those recently. I don't go on those those so-called Patriot websites and more websites and get those case laws because what you do is sometimes people read the synopsis and not the full case. So he caught me on that because I really wasn't. I was just throwing bullshit out there and see what happened. Okay, the plaintiff's argument that the right to operate a motor vehicle is a fundamental is fundamental because of its relation 
to the fundamental rights of interstate travel. Now look at this. If you have common sense, you know that why would you go into a court and argue about your right to travel? If you already know you have your right to travel, you would argue that the case is invalid. Why? Because it is infringing on your rights. Not because they tell you to have a driver's license, because you don't have to have a driver's license. You would have to go into court and, and tell them that you're infringing on my rights of having a fair trial. Why? Because the state has not proven an injury. It's very simple. They have to prove that they are being injured by me not having a driver's license. I want to see how they going to prove that. <laughs> I want to see how they are going to prove that. Shapiro versus Thompson. Okay, I don't care about this case because the case don't matter. It's utterly frivolous. Just like his response is utterly frivolous. The plaintiff is not being prevented from traveling. Of course they're not. Sam, you guys have to understand one thing. This is why I keep telling you guys to stop bringing up the right to fucking travel. You guys have to understand the state has the right to enforce its policy. You have a right to protect your rights. These two things exist, okay? Just like a police officer has the right to pull you over. Now, does the police officer have a right to use the evidence from the warrantless stop in a court case? Probably not. <laughs> See what I'm saying? So now when you understand the laws, you don't let people like this who don't understand the law tell you how the law goes because you don't, you know it don't go like that. So look, the plaintiff is not being prevented from interstate travel by public transportation. See, that's what they use. That's how they use the semantical stuff. Oh, you're not, you're not prevented from uh, public travel by catching a bus. You're not prevented by ca travel from catching a trolley. See that slick shit? They Because they know people can't read, man. Okay, by common carrier or in a motor vehicle driven by someone with a license to drive it, okay? What is at issue here is not his right to travel the interstate, but his right to operate a motor vehicle on the public highways. See, this is what people do. They commingle the right to travel with your right to operate a vehicle on public highways. Those are two separate arguments, okay? And this is where people commingle and mess up their argument. That's why I did the video to stop you guys from bringing up this dumb argument. But yet people on the comment section or people in these comments or people on the internet keep bringing up these videos about the right to travel. You have the right to travel. But can the state force you to get a license? No. <laughs> and we have no hesitation holding that is not a fundamental right. Okay, so Brebrand versus Pettit. The ability to drive a motor vehicle on a public roadway is not a fundamental right. I never said it was. <laughs> I never said it was, but it isn't. They can't. Look, it is a privilege that is granted upon the, compli upon the compliance with the statutory licensing procedure and may be revoked. So they're talking about somebody who is driving without a license or driving on the revocation. So this applies to that. That doesn't apply to you being able to get in a motor vehicle without a license and move said motor vehicle from A to B and maybe even C. Now, if a police officer runs your plates or find out that you don't have any plates, yes, they can pull you over. Yes, they can give you a citation. Yes, that citation can give you a notice to appear. Yes, the court can attempt to give you a, a summons to appear in court. But that citation has to state an injury. That complaint has to state an injury. And if it don't, get out of there. <laughs> that's what he's not understanding because I know law better than him. I don't get into case law, man, because all of this stuff is just gobbledygook and it's a way to keep your ass fucking in a whole bunch of bullshit. It's people just now finding out that the fingerprint, the, the fingerprint process is illegal. 
You people just now finding out that you can't fingerprint somebody who's not been convicted of a crime. Just now figure. I've been told people this in 2017, 2016, even earlier. I've been told people this. The DOJ website will tell you this. Department of Justice will tell you this. You guys are just now learning your rights. I've already known mine because I've had them violated. <laughs> That's why I had to start learning. I was like, hold up. I'm not going to argue case law. I'll be at this all day. The prosecutor ain't going to run out of cases to throw at me. This is what case law is for. It's for people who go up to court, don't know what they're doing. When you know what you're doing, they're going to toss out your case and act like it never happened. <laughs> the ability to drive a motor vehicle on a public highway is not a fundamental right. It is revocable privilege. OK, it says the ability to drive. Now, think about this from common sense. How can the state revoke my ability to drive? The only thing they could do is steal my car. Because if I have the keys to the vehicle, I can drive at any time. Now, if a police officer gets behind me, then yeah, he might be able to stop my car, but they have to have what? A hearing. They can immobilize my car. They still have to have a hearing. So either way, we go into court, which they're not going to be able to prove that I did I did a crime on my car or I did damage. All they could be able to prove is I violated a citation. Oh. In the presence of an appellate, uh, asserts that the state of Tennessee has unduly infringed on his right to see. He keeps bringing up these right to travel cases, which actually proved my point of the video. You prove my point through your cases. You prove my point that bringing up the right to travel is a stupid. It is stupid. By requiring licensing and registration of a motor vehicle prior to the operation on the public highways of this state. However, contrary to his assertion, at no time did the state of Tennessee place constraint upon the appellate's exercise of rights. What did he say? The state never placed restraint on his rights. Do you see the double speak and do you see the semantics? Because the state under like, dude, I, we didn't stop you from starting your vehicle and driving it up the block. We didn't stop you from, from getting in your car and going up to the grocery store. We didn't stop you from getting in your car and going to your mama's house. But we're stopping. We're, we're violating your rights by this court proceeding. But we're not we're not doing that. The stop wasn't a violation of your rights. You see what I'm saying? So you got to understand the semantics of law. I don't need 50 million case laws to tell me that. I don't need that. I, so look. So his his right to travel within the state or to points beyond the boundaries remains unimpeded. See, they're saying this. They're saying you could travel without a license, but we're going to fine you for it. <laughs> Thus, not only has the appellant's right to freedom been, uh, uh, freedom of, uh, I'm sorry, right of freedom of travel been infringed. So they're just basically saying that his right of freedom has not been infringed, obviously because the police officer caught him why, why? when he was traveling in his car. <laughs> Man, don't try to play semantical arguments with me because I've already come on, man. Stop it, dude. Look, when it comes to traffic court, we don't play. We get that tossed out and we get that money. Okay? Look, we cannot conclude that his rights, that, that that this right has ever been implemented in this case. Rather, based upon the context of his argument, see, his argument. That's why he lost, because his argument. Not not because the state can force him to get a license. He lost because his argument. Every law that he, every case that he brings out, he helps prove my point. It's not about the license. It's about the argument. The appellate asserts an infringement on upon his right to operate a motor vehicle on the public highways in this state. This notion is wholly separated from the right of travel. Thank you for proving my point, sir. See, this is why I put the video out in the form that I put it out, because the trolls are going to help me help y'all. I love it, baby. I love it. So the ability to drive on the mo uh, drive a motor vehicle on the public highway is not a fundamental right. I never said it was. I never said it was. If you watch the video, but see, that's what people do when they, they listen to the title and then they don't actually watch the video. What they do is they sound very stupid, because if you watch the video, I'm not talking about you having the right to travel or not. I'm saying it's a wasted argument for the court. It's not for the court. 
It has nothing to do with the court. Yeah, because you, the court and the traffic stop are two separate events. It's a pre-trial argument. It's not a trial argument. It's a pre-trial argument. Jesus Christ, man. Why are people, people going to put some respect on my name? Like I, they, People acting like I don't know law. Just because I don't know every 50 court case. I don't need a court case to tell me a procedure. I know the procedure within my state. I know the procedure the cop has to have when he's detaining me. I know how to get a, car, a, a case tossed out if the cop detains me wrong. <laughs> so what are you talking about? Look, the ability to drive a motor vehicle. Okay, I already read that shit. State versus Boer. Okay, defendant does not have a right, a fundamental right uh, to unregulated travel in his uh, by his automobile within the state. This court has explicitly ruled that the right to operate a motor vehicle on public highways is not a fundamental right. Okay, but they're using the words in a context that they're able to regulate a motor vehicle because that's the term that they coined. You see what I'm saying? They didn't say automobile. He said motor vehicle. Because <laughs> people can't read, okay? He said this is the word that they're using to enforce their statute. And they know that their statute doesn't apply to shit. They're just saying, okay, we're going to use this statute. And then when we create a citation, it creates evidence of indebtedness. That's what they're doing. Duh, I'm just telling you what the, how the court operates. Moreover, this court has long recognized the right to use the public highways for travel by motor vehicles is one which properly can be regulated. Of course it can be regulated. I didn't say it can't be regulated. The regulations don't apply to me. <laughs> Legislator invalid ex exercise of police power of the state. See, now, people think that when I say this, that I'm, I'm thinking like lawless, like I'm saying all laws don't apply to me. No. For the court to enforce an actual law like that, for them, it has, there has to be an injury behind it. If there's no injury, then the court can't enforce it. You see what I'm saying? So state versus government. But I'm sure you think you know better than the above. Because I, I do know. I know I don't know better than the above. Of course, I know better than you. That's the, I know better than you. To enjoy your fines and depending on the state, possibly some jail time, should you argue the defense against charging? I'm not arguing a defense. I'm not arguing the defense. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So look, and the statute defines that. So I'm basically like, what, what is he talking about? So he's talking about that the statute tells me what a motor vehicle is and what a person is. And no, it doesn't. You just read the statute. It doesn't. It doesn't say automobile. They can clearly put automobile in there, but they don't. Why? Because it doesn't apply to you. <laughs> also, you kept spouting case law like it has any merit. Any idiot can go into court and lose and create new case law. I'm using those cases not as an argument because I don't care about case law, nor do I use it. I told you a state can require a person to have a license. It doesn't mean they can't enforce it. You can bring up appellate, you bring up appellate, appellate cases that should have never been in the Court of Appeals in the first place when the lower court didn't have jurisdiction to enforce them. If a person signs up for an administrative tribunal and fails to know their rights, they deserve to lose. None of these cases are relevant to this video because the video is based on substantial due process and procedural due process in the lower court and not actual driver's licenses. All of these cases show, all these cases show is that the court can sue you for not having a driver's license or the state. I'm, I'm at the state can sue you for not having a driver's license, which is the capacity to sue. And I agree, the state has the capacity to sue you for not having one, but they lack standing to enforce it. And that's why <laughs> that wasn't brought up in any case. The point of this video is dealing with the lower court, not the Court of Appeals. There are tons of cases showing people arguing the wrong things in the lower court and losing and appealing the wrong things. Also, I don't lose or pay fines because I would never bring up these arguments. So with that being said, that Zherzhov Alexander is hitting right, smells good, 
And I am out of here. I hope y'all learned something. Uh, you know what? Some of these days I'm going to start with going forward. I'm going to start addressing some comments. So if I get bad comments or good comments, I'm going to start addressing some of them and I might do some questions too. I'm out.